about twice a year for the last 20 years, Levi's Vintage Clothing releases a limited edition numbered pair of 501 jeans. These are amongst the most coveted and collected items in the Lions production. They use the jeans to celebrate May 20th as 501 day and often again in the fall for the holiday collectors. I've gathered a list. Let me know in the comments, which is your favorite limited edition LVC 501 pair? This is Den and Denim. Every limited edition at LVC 501 Gene. Big shout out to Evan Gutierrez, my copper riveted member. You're the best. Special thanks to my Patreon subscribers. For as little as a dollar a month, you could have watched this video two weeks ago. And lots of other bonus stuff. But being a subscriber is the greatest way to help this channel. Just keep viewing, maybe click on an ad or two. And let's get going. Let's start with the double X waist overalls. Now I know the 1870 duck pants and the 1873 first blue jeans. Some of those have numbered pairs. But I think the real beginning of our story starts in 1875 with the oldest, oldest, precious grime. This number pair of 278 comes with a canvas note sack and a 1920s Henley. Uh, I'm not sure what this pair is based on. It's the oldest pair of jeans in the archives are the 1879s known as the double X. Now the recreation of it celebrates the oldest known jean we have and it comes with a suede sash to hold it in, numbered out of 300. The 1880s, there are Nevadas that have numbered, there's quite a few of them actually, but there's one that comes in a special box, heavily distressed, it's supposed to be one of the replicas of the highest selling jean at the time. But I think what's even more special from the 1880s is the Napav. That they basically give you a pair of long shorts with uh, some gloves of the cuffs if you want to re-sew them or whatever. It's one of the most distressed, unwearable pairs that they made. I think it looks good for just framing. Also comes with a bandana and a tote bag that tells you the story. Now it's time for the 501 territory. 1890 pair, Death Valley. Limited 1,000, although numbered out of 680. This pair is a replica of one found at a borax mine in Death Valley, California. The rough fading is due to the borax element wearing down on it. 1890s pair, Spur Bites. An archival piece. We see evidence of someone had a pair of spurs. Some rodeo cowboy. But then we move into 1906 and the bunkhouse. Now, I did an early episode talking about this pair. It's one of the special ones as what it's celebrating. They give you the news clipping that they found when they dug up this pair. And there's also an available camber shirt that they did dig up with it and you can accompany that to make an outfit. There's also a women's skirt for the missus to wear. 1915, the Cone Mail Baylor. This is an archive piece that comes with a travel bag. Not sure if it's a limited edition numbered, but Pretty certain it would be. Then 1917 says limited edition, not sure if it's numbered, but there's two versions, both that come in a crappy paper box, but it just looks funny in this kind of a tight box. But one is Cone Mills denim and the other supposedly is Amaskia denim. No idea how we have that. 
Now, it probably is a pair of 1917s, but it's often marked as a pair of 1918s, is an archival piece, the Homer Campbell Centennial Gene. It's got a lot of names. Basically, it's an archival piece where a guy named Homer Campbell returned them because they kept ripping, and he stitched it together to make it look like a diaper, and now they sell that to you. And as I've done this about three times, then we get to Stumpy. This one's listed as 1922 in the tag, and so we'll cover it in that episode, but it doesn't have belt loops, so it's obviously from before. Moving on in the decades, and we get to 1930s general pair, Heath. In the early 1990s, Levi's launched the Search to Bring Them Home, a contest to find the oldest pair of jeans. Now, they didn't find something older than the Homer Campbells, but they did find the Heath, named after the guy who found them. This pair written in it is from a weird counterfeit pair. Then 1933, has two pairs. The first one is the Arizona Cowboy, celebrating not having a cinch. Not sure if that's numbered, but it is an archival piece. Then, awesome one, the tow rope. Fantastic story. Comes with pieces of rope and an oil can. And we get to 1937 in the banner ad. This is where we start to get into something reimagined creations. The banner ad, Levi's, was celebrating coveted, covered rivets, concealed rivets, they called them at the time. And each pair, depending on your size, it has like a front and a back. It just shows a little more of this banner. I used to think they were super, just not so crazy. They kind of wore on me looking at the pictures of the real ones. And I'm very curious to see how they distress, but also just more to see Levi's do another painted pair for the limited editions. Now this one also comes accompanying with a Type 1 jacket and a duffel bag. 1944 has an early numbered out of 800. This one's called the Shore Leave. Slightly distressed, but has a flasher. And cool pockets. But the real limited edition for 1944 are the perfect imperfections. Five variations, numbered out of 100 each version. And they have different pockets and arcuate designs to celebrate how that pair was different throughout the war years. Part of the commercial was they claimed these would be the last of the Cone Mills denim. But they've made that same claim three times again since then, like once every year. Hashtag Levi's Lies. In 1947, we have the King Combo here. The 1947 Bing Crosby Tuxedo. An archive piece, perhaps more from uh, 1940 early 1950s, but they redid it as a 1947 pair of 501s. The selvage line is on the outside, giving the appearance of a fancy tuxedo. Now you can complete this with the coat, red shirt, and the tuxedo travel bag. Mm. Again, 1947 has a Japanese text. This came out in 2022. The code name for this pair is Katakana, and this is the third time that LBC has made Japanese text 501s. 1955, this is perhaps the greatest idea for a reimagining the White Oak set, let's call it the Decades. And this was made with denim from the White Oak Mill as it was shutting down. It was made from five decades of red selvage denim from the 1930s to the 1970s, or at least recreations of how each denim felt and the twill. Then they threw in a few patches of plain white line loom state selvage, replicating the feel of the denim from the 1890s when it would have been amaskiag. 
I can't wait to see who has this pair and how it fades. The differences in it, but just to, for a blind person to feel, how is that different from, you know, just the look? But also the look is crazy too. Would love to see them redo this, although not expecting it. There is a Type 2 jacket. These are numbered out of 250, I think. And they come with a box made of white oak wood. 1955 also has a pair of Japanese text. This version's code name is just Japan. It is the second time they've done the Japanese text 501s, but they numbered them out of 501 this time. And for the 47, it's the same. 1960. This year is only available as a limited edition. 2021, they released 501Zs. That means it has a zipper. 500 rigid, 500 distress. Distress is called the rumbler. Zippers and an offset belt loop. When you see standard rigid as the limited edition, then that year will probably only be available as a limited edition, which is currently the case for the 1960s and the 1963 or circa 1963 for this year's 2022's limited edition inside outs reversed denim that will fade darker over time now there's a story to this thank you michael for the letter 1963 rigids are coming as a limited edition for the fall winter catalog 2000 made from cone mills denim again in 1966 this had a really cool pair it was the first ever japanese text limited 150 pairs but not numbered for some reason codename harajuku i guess popular demand insisted that they remake these or they had the buttons and rivets, even though they redid the patches differently. I'm not sure, but they redid them three times. Not sure if they'll redo them again. 66 still deserves its kind of own limited edition pair. And those flared cut-ups don't count. 1971, Golden Tickets. Now this year was released as a big E in the early 2000s, one of the rare pairs. But this Wonka inspired rigid pair with a piece of gold foil and a blue tote bag, this one fell short to audiences. I mean, it's gonna wear off and you don't really have much to show for what it is. 1976, we see the Tendonemes crossover. This is a Dutch vintage store. They did a men's and a women's pairs of, I wouldn't really call this an archive, it's more of a vintage item with a brown paint stain. They did limited 75 pairs, I think, of these. But the real creme de la creme for 1976, obviously, are the mirrored pairs. Uh, this is a real beauty. They had the patch, the rivets, buttons, and even the denim weft are going from right to left instead of left to right, like on every other pair. There's 29 pairs of limited editions. I realize they'll add another every six months, but this is current for now. Let me know if I missed a pair or if you got better pictures of said pairs. You can drop me a line at den underscore in underscore denim LVC at Instagram or for high quality pictures, send them to Gmail, den and denim LVC, one word. Let me know what your favorite pair is. I want to do a top five of my favorites, top five of your favorites, put them together. Thanks for your views. Thanks for everything. Doing this channel is an absolute dream of mine. I'm Den, this is Den and Denim, love your jeans!